Before we get started with today's video, I just want to let you guys know we do have some new t-shirts and merchandise over on the Motion Auto TV website. So head over, get yourself a Travis Customs t-shirt, a Turbo, Make it Keep America Fast bumper sticker, and a Burnouts 2020 sticker, as well as our uh, sunglasses, some other new items and stuff on there. But uh, MotionAutoTV.com, support your boy. Check out the new Travis Customs t-shirt. And uh, this is pre-order, so uh, we're only doing a limited run of these things. So if you want them, uh, be sure to jump on them soon. What's up, guys? So we are at ECU Master uh, today. Yesterday it was mostly classroom training and kind of going over a lot of stuff with the internal stuff with the ECU. And uh, this is just kind of their uh, their training course, like the EMU Black, a little bit of dyno stuff, kind of setting up uh, ignition triggers and all that type of stuff. We did a ton of stuff, went through like the whole manual, uh, the whole PowerPoint presentation yesterday. Uh, took a lot of notes and stuff, and then today we actually over here messing around with some stuff on the dyno, uh, showing like the oscilloscope, all the stuff kind of in the ECU. Uh, you know, basically kind of trying to start from scratch on, on, on a car. Uh, you know, if like it doesn't have a base map or stuff, we did, we did a lot of that stuff yesterday. So we're gonna be playing around on the dyno a little bit today, um, and uh, yeah, kind of setting base timing in here. I can't see anything, so you'll keep moving this offset until you can at least see it, at least. So we'll go ahead again. When you see this. It could be, if you have it sequential, it could be 180 degrees out. Or if your idle is working, you can do it like this. So this is how you're controlling the, the throttle? Yeah. Right there? Okay. Yeah, because I can't control it like this. Yeah. It's drive by wire. So. Is pretty much going to be it for uh, for hanging out over here at uh, the ECU master headquarters uh, basically he, ha he does all the shipping and everything in his uh, his building next door and then uh, they just um, the tenant kind of moved out of this so they got this whole dyno room kind of set up uh, to where we could actually like have like little classroom things right here obviously he has his display board and, and that, that that worked out really well when we had the, the classroom sessions here but yeah have the dyno have all that type of stuff uh, so we didn't go crazy like trying to make insane power poles because power poles are kind of, at a certain to a certain extent, that's kind of the easy stuff. Uh, you know, it's dialing in everything else. It's all the drivability and the startup stuff, especially like starting from scratch. And that's kind of one of the things that, that they dove into is like where to go if like literally you just get a car that like doesn't have a wiring harness, doesn't have a base map, doesn't have anything. Like where do you start from there? And that was really cool to see. And a lot of it is just... It's like everything. It's just it's dialing in, dialing it it in yourself in over time. Uh, your tuning capabilities just kind of start soft. The fueling stuff on ECU Master, it's it's pretty easy to, to kind of dial in, and I've I messed with it enough in the past where I feel like the the fuel and stuff is there, and then just timing. It's just kind of like keep it conservative and and do that and work up from there. Um, there is going to be a dyno moving in pretty close to me, which. Uh, We'll probably show here shortly, uh, but when we do get the Civic and everything back together, uh, that is one thing that I would like to do is actually bring the Civic uh, basically right close to, to my shop. It's not even that far, and uh, kind of play around with it myself. Uh, obviously, we're going to change the setup, try to turn it up a little bit, and um, you know, now that most of the other stuff is dialed in, it'll just be cool to actually, you know, kind of play with the power stuff on it, play with the boost control. We learned a lot about uh, you know the PID settings and, and setting like. The, the boost control and like closed loop which you don't really have to but just learned tons and tons of stuff 
Uh, it's all kind of stuff that you could go through in the menus, but you just you don't actually dive through it and have a discussion and ask questions and all that stuff. So if you guys are interested in this thing, um, Zach is going to be hosting another one, I believe, um, probably before the end of the year. Uh, we were kind of talking about that a little bit. So uh, if you guys aren't familiar with ECU Master Products or anything like that, uh, you know he, he has been a supporter of me in the channel for I think it's been about two, three years now, uh, right as soon as I got the Supra. So I've been working with Zach for a while. I've known him for 10 plus years coming down here to the Lone Star events. And uh, you know he was always around, I've always been around him. And uh, cool guy, cool company, uh, really good product. It's just crazy the stuff that, that they do, like this power management unit, literally get rid of all the fuses in your car. Uh, the can keyboards, uh, can little board that you could kind of program like and it's so small you could put it like in your airbag pretty much. Um, the ADU which is a big like nice screen. Obviously the EMU Black and they are coming out with the EMU Pro uh, which is going to be crazy because you could basically run like six, like a 16 cylinder like full sequential like ignition timing stuff. Basically you could run like a twin turbo Lamborghini on that so that's like getting to the the point where it's like motec um cyvex type stuff so super crazy but uh i got an early flight so i guess we're gonna probably get out of here all right guys so we are back from texas or i'm back from texas uh from the ec master tuning in uh in little little group that we went to our little education seminar and uh, so one of the things that I've been wanting to do is actually mess with the Mustangs uh, tune right before we went to the Cletus and cars. I basically threw E85 in the tank and just scaled it. So it has 1,000 cc injectors. I scaled them down to about 700 cc injectors. And basically what that does is that adds about 30% fuel to it, which 30%, E85 needs about 30% more fuel uh, to keep the, the same uh, lambda targets or whatever. So lambda air fuel ratio, whatever targets. So anyhow, where I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw this up on the lift uh, real quick, just because when we were at the Cletus and Cars thing, in order to get it to do a really good burnout, I just removed the rear rotors, uh, folded over uh, some paper like seven times so it didn't compress, and stuffed that up in there, and actually bolted the calipers back on so that they weren't dangling around or doing anything crazy in there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hook up the rear brakes, because if we do go do a little uh, street tuning with this thing, probably going to have to use the brakes a lot. Uh, and the other thing is, is uh, there might be another little surprise. We might actually be able to get this thing on a dyno probably sooner than you would think. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to mess with that. Ty's messing with this saw. He's probably got some, I think, like some uh, sway bar in link. It's, it's, it's clunking and stuff. But uh, I'm going to do that, and then we're going to go uh, do some tuning. All right, guys, so I just came over to Sonic real quick and uh, played with the laptop a little bit since this thing is all fully warmed up. I played with the boost blend tables a little bit. And um, not really much else. I mean, it seems like it's running pretty good. I changed a little bit of stuff with the, with the fueling uh, at idle. Um, but I really haven't really messed with anything else. So uh, one of the things is when I had the, the boost sensor or whatever with, uh, it scales it so it's like a ramp. So one table was zero and the other, five, other one was 65%. But what it was doing is it was changing up the spool up characteristics when you had it in the lower settings. It felt really, really lazy because it didn't have the, the wastegate uh, like pinned shut. Um, so it was cracking a little bit earlier than normal. And this thing has like a really low spring in it. I think it's like a 10 pound spring. So instead of having that like rush of power, which we kind of did that to keep, uh, uh, you know, keep the rods in it essentially, but we're not making enough power, especially now that we're on E85. I think we're, we'd be okay like letting this thing kind of spool up really quick. Uh, but I'm probably gonna play with that here uh, in a little bit, but we're gonna go drive it around and see. So now what I did is uh, we never played with the timing uh, when I was doing the E85 stuff so, or when I switched it over to E85. I was like, oh, the only thing we're doing with this thing is going to be doing a burnout. So uh, I didn't play with any timing stuff, so I just put two degrees in it and then uh, changed the way that the boost came on in the lower gear. So it's hitting like 22 pounds right now. Tell you what Just sank it. So it feels, I mean, it feels pretty good. Yeah, it's like it picks up a lot of Yeah, it sooner. feels like with the, I mean, obviously like one of the things about E85 is once you, uh, once you 
once you add the fuel, like the fuel just doesn't give you just a bunch of power. I mean, it might just like cooling effects and stuff, but it's uh, it's adding the timing in it that is what which allows you to get the power out of it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it feels really responsive. And so one of the things that is uh, is nice about actually having one of these ECUs in your car, uh, I know I got away with the stock ECU uh, for a really long time on uh, on this engine when it was in my drift car, and honestly it worked out really good. And uh, you know for the power that I was making it was awesome, but diagnostic wise it uh, you know never really gives you anything. Whereas this, just how we just hit, I don't know if if, uh, if I'll find that clip of us hitting the boost cut or it was like oh we just like, boom. It's some weird stuff. Uh, you can see right here, so we hit 42, uh, 42 PSI of atmospheric pressure, uh, which you basically have to take away um, atmospheric, which is about 14, it's like 14.5, 14.7 supposedly, but here in Colorado it's probably like 13 or so. Uh, so you basically take 13 away from that, and that's 30, that's almost 30, so that's like, you know, between 28 and 30 pounds of boost. Uh, and you can see right here, we have our fuel cut set right there. And the other cool thing is you could actually, in the log, so you can see this is this is a more basic table right here. Uh, the nice thing about this ECU is it actually logs everything when you're actually driving, so no matter what, if you have it selected on here. And uh, what you could do also is your curve. So you can see right here, it was at like 3,800 RPM, it was at 13 degrees of timing, and it hit 42 almost 43 uh, pounds of boost atmospheric, so that's about 30 pounds of boost at 13 degrees of timing. So uh, again, kind of uh, kind of still safe, you know. Uh, this ECU, it's one of those things where I don't think you could actually just get it and tune it yourself. It's one of those things where if you could get it and if you have a base map that uh, that ECU Master provides, you could throw the base map on there, upload your injectors and stuff, your your data, your, your latency values and dead times, and um, you should be able to start your car and take it to the to a tuner. So, and any tuner, I don't think anybody should have any issue tuning uh, this ECU. Uh, since going to the class and doing all that stuff and just talking about this ECU compared to some other ones, um, I just really like it a lot. So I, I, I've always liked it, but now I uh, now I really like it. So it's it's pretty much the best bang for your buck, um, you know, in this price range. I mean, you could pretty much run you know turbo LS ones. Uh, about I think the craziest you could do is like a, a V8 with um, with two variable valve timing uh, things. So if you had like one on the intake side, so there's actually some guys in uh, that were in that class. Uh, they build uh, some hot rods, like some old like Shelby Shelby Cobra style things, and uh, when they when they were um, oh no the door chime. So uh, they actually use the ECU Master EMU Black in their builds, but they they can't do because that has an intake VVTI and an exhaust VVTI in two separate banks. Uh, so they're able to run the intake uh, variable valve timing, but not the exhaust variable valve timing on it. So they just have it locked out. Uh, but ECU Master is coming out with like an EMU Pro, which is uh, I talked about that a little bit, and that's like that's like some Motec style stuff, but. Uh, a lot of really cool products. Um, I think we're going to be getting one of their dashes for my uh, for my Civic, and um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for today, guys. We kind of messed around with this thing. I know we didn't do some some crazy stuff. We might try to do some dyno stuff here soon. Like I said, sooner sooner than you think. But uh, I really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, if you guys are excited to see me kind of play with my own tuning stuff a little bit, um, these things that obviously they've already been tuned really good. You know, Steve at MSpec, he did, did a hell of a job on this thing, but again, it was tuned on 91, so I was just kind of adjusting some things for pump gas. Uh, but I have the Marabera, that uh, GM4200 Vortec that I really want to slap a turbo on and actually pin one of these ECUs in it. And there's no base map, there's no nothing, uh, there's no trigger wheel settings, anything. So I want to use what I learned in that class to try and actually get that thing all set up all myself. Uh, try to tune it, make some power, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, 
super stoked. Uh, link in the description for EC Master stuff, and I uh, appreciate you guys watching, and see you later.